Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem from weekly contest 386, this week's weekly contest. So this problem, earliest second mark indices. So basically with this problem, we have an array and they chose to zip for it to be one indexed. Um, but we have array A or nums and we have uh, an array of change indices. We'll see what this one represents in a second, but we can do, um, we can mark indices uh, and initially all the indices are unmarked and our task is to mark all the indices in the array basically all of them um, and the way we can mark them is through this operation so we have seconds where first we have second one second two second three all the way to the end and in each second from one to m um, m being the length of change indices you can perform one of the following operations. Either you choose an element of the array and decrement it by one, or you choose an, one of the change indices, um, not just one, so we are at index S, so if the position at change indices of that second, this is slightly complicated, but it's important to remember this is S, the, sec the current second, you can take the value in that position, which basically here is just one of the indices, and take the value at that position, remember also we are still indexing starting from one, and check if it's equal to zero, then only in this case you can mark that index. Okay? Or you could just not do anything. So that basically means, um, for example, let's say we I have all the elements are already zero, but we are at second um, uh, maybe one, and second, um, uh, and let's say second one has something that was already marked. Then we can't we can't mark anything, and decrementing to one won't be useful. So in that case, we can just do nothing until we get to a position that is unmarked uh, in the next second, in one of the next seconds, and be able to mark an element. So that's sort of why there is a do nothing here. Now, what's the goal of the problem? Well, the goal is to return the earliest second where we can mark all indices using these operations. And if it's not possible, we'll rest in minus one. So it's a sort of complicated description, but let's look at an example. So these are the change indices values, and this is the array, okay? So for second one here, how can we tr check this? So for second one, if you take a look here, the only, pos the only position that is zero is p position three. Remember, we are indexing from one. But the problem is change indices zero is change indices one, which is the second we are at, is equal to two. And if you look at two, it's not zero. So we can't mark that index, okay? But we can do the operation of decrementing. So we can choose to decrement position one by one. So that why the first position is position one, we decrement it. Similar argument for second two, there is, it's to the index here. Um, so we th so it's not zero, so we can't decrement it, so we can't mark it, so we decrement. Now, at second three, again, position two and position two is not one, so we decrement it. And then same thing at position four, um, position four, one, two, three, four, the value, the index is two, second four, the index is two here. So two, one, two is also still one, so we can't mark it, so we decrement. And no, then on position in second five, position five is three, and three is zero, so now we can mark it. Um, and we can we can keep going until second eight, where we would have, we would have marked all three positions, and we can return. So I hope that makes sense. Why sometimes at specific index we can't mark anything. So what's best to do? Best to do is to just decrement the element by one. So that next time on the next second, we have a chance of finding zero at that position, right? So that's sort of the, the idea here of the problem. Now, if you look at the constraint, it's only to, up to 2000. So there is potentially a way to do um, um, like oven squared oven like an, um, so let's see how we can tackle this. Okay. so. So the first thing, remember, we can mark only if the element at a position for that second is zero. And the other thing is, 
the constraints are small. So the first thing we can think about, you, you may think about, okay, let's try maybe backtracking, right? Let's try just checking if we can do an operation, if we can do it, and then check, find the min. That's definitely an approach. But another way to actually think about this is we are looking for the earliest second. What does the earliest second mean? This means basically the minimum number of seconds, okay? And when you are searching for a min or searching for a max in some space, you need to think about binary search and see if it can be applied. So let's see if we can try binary search. What's the condition for binary search? Well, the condition for binary search is that there is a function that we can do to find the answer such that that function is monotonic. So what do we mean by monotonic in binary search? Well, monotonic means either the function is first false and then it becomes true, but once it becomes true, it stays true no matter what. Or the function is initially true and then it stays false and once it becomes false, it stays false no. for all the values afterwards. So let's see if one of these can apply to the function we are looking for. So the function usually is just the function for this that we are trying to minimize. So what's the, what we are trying to minimize? We are trying to minimize the number of seconds it takes to mark all the indices. So let's actually use that as uh, the function. So we are trying to minimize number of seconds it takes to mark all indices. So let's actually make our function just the number of does, uh, is it possible to mark all indices with x seconds? Because that's the mean we are looking for. And so let's say f of x is, can we mark um, all indices in less than or equal to x seconds? So if we define this as our function, let's think about whether that fits the one of these two, whether that fits this one or this one. Well, let's take an example. Let's assume, for example, that we can mark all indices in three seconds for some example. Well, then it's definitely possible to mark it in four or five and all the way up. Why? Because we have an operation do nothing, right? So we can just mark all the indices at index at second three and then at second four do nothing. And so that way we can, this function is true for x equal to four. Or we can mark it, let's say at five, um, um, this can either be equal or or smaller than or equal, right? Or five again, we can do nothing in the two seconds, uh, last seconds. For six, we can do nothing in the three last seconds. So you get the idea. So, so definitely, once it becomes true, it stays true because we already marked all the indices for the remaining seconds. We can just not do anything. Now. If it's possible to mark in three seconds, it's put, it, it, we will have false before that because like, like in this eight here, it's possible to mark it with eight seconds. It's possible to mark it with nine seconds because in the nine seconds we can just do nothing. But with, for example, four seconds, we can't really mark it because we have this. Because we can't with the with the change indices, we haven't marked anything. Same thing with three, same thing with two. So this tells you that we have the pattern, this pattern here, false, false, and then once it becomes true, it stays true. And so this means it is a monotonic function, so we can apply binary search. Okay? So we can apply our binary search. So now the problem becomes how do we define our binary search function and how we define the boundaries? Well, for the boundaries, it's easy. We can just start from, um, the way I usually write binary search is to pick a low value that is below, one step below what is possible, and then pick high as one step above as possible. So the for the number of seconds, zero or minus one is one of the, yeah, because we start at second one. So what's not uh, below what's possible is either you can pick minus one or zero. For high, well, the number of seconds, remember, is up to the change indices, right? Number of indices, because um, we mark for these, okay? So we can actually take um, as the max just the length of this change indices plus one because to be above what's possible, okay? Okay, so that's the first thing for the boundaries. Now, how do we implement actually f of x? 
whether it takes whether it's possible can we mark all indices in x seconds well how do we do it well we can just define our function we can sort of do this backwards basically we can go through the indices we can th go through the indexes so for example we can go through the seconds from x all the way to um, one okay we can alter the indices here so that we can actually index for change indices starting from zero but for now let's just ignore that for a second and so what we need to keep track of is the market indice indices right and what we want to what do we check at the end here well what we want to check is if the number of market indices is smaller than the, all the indices in the array let's call them n then that means we weren't able to mark all the indices so we can return false but why are we going backwards well we are going backwards because we want to mark at index s Right? So for example, index six here, we want to mark at, at position for position six, six from here, but we want to see if it's possible to actually get that element to zero from previous operations. So how do we do that? Well, at, at position, at this position, we just can mark how many do we need to make that position zero. So let's say we are at two, we are at position um, change index six, one two three four five six which is position two well we need to have gotten this number to zero okay and so how do we do that well we can just check we can just keep track of the number of operations we need to get that position to zero so let's call it operations okay and so if what we need to do here is we can just check um we can check if um, there is no need to mark something that is already marked so first we need to check if it's marked so the first thing is let's take um, the index so let's call it index at change indices so the one that we need to get to zero if that is not in market because there is no need to mark it if it's not in market then what do we need well we need the number in that position to be able to get it to zero because each time we'll subtract by one so what is that position we will just do index but we need to do um, index minus one because the values in change indices are assuming that the array is indexed from one but actually our array is indexed from zero but that's not the key idea here the the, the, the key idea is that if this element let's say was two we need two operations before this second to be able to um, to be able to uh, mark this index okay and now when we mark it we can add it to our market uh, list but if it was already marked okay so that means we can actually use this operation this second as one of the seconds to reduce one of the elements in a in, in one of the positions I hope this 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 is clear, but we can only use it if actually we have more than zero. Otherwise, we just do nothing. If we have no sort of debt to get a specific position to zero, we can just uh, do nothing. But if we do, then we want to subtract by one because we can use the second to subtract and get the um, get one of the future seconds get its value to be zero. Okay, it's sort of backwards, uh, and that's what's clever about this approach. Um, and so, at the end, we said that if the if all the elements were marked as smaller than n, then we return false. But we also have another um, condition here, which is: what if we, after going through all the indices, we still have some values in operation? What if we still have this operation is not zero? What does that mean? That means we marked an index that was not that has not reached zero, right? And so that's an illegal operation, and so that means this is actually not possible. So it's false. So here we also want to check. We can only return true if the number of operation is actually zero, okay? Because otherwise that means um, 
that means we marked an index, but we were not able to get its value to zero, which which is which is not something we should do. So return false. I hope this was clear. So it's sort of backwards and just keeping track of how many we had we need um, in a previous second to get that element to zero. Okay. Um, so let me just um, so that's pretty much the core idea of the binary search. Now we can just implement our template binary search. So let's do it here. So first I'll just copy what we just um, uh, wrote in the for our binary search function. So something like this. Um, now I did slight adjustments here. For example, here for x seconds, I'm starting from actually um, x minus one just because the problem says this is indexed starting from one, but actually for an array in Python is indexed from zero. And so we start all the, we start from x minus one and we go to zero. So we actually do x seconds count if we count zero here. And so that's why what we are doing here. Um, and then as I said here, if it's not bigger than zero, then we can just use this second to do nothing, which is a valid operation. So this is our binary search. Now we can just write, uh, this is our function for the binary search. Now we can write our actual binary search. So first we need n for uh, the length of the array. Let's just call this a for simplification. Um, and we can just define what we said for low and high. So we said low, let's use minus one. For high, let's use uh, something just above the indices we have. So the length plus one. And then we stop when, um, so in this binary search template that I use, we stop when mid is, when low is here and high is here, because we are looking for the first true, because the first true is the first number of seconds where we were able to mark all, all indices. That's exactly the minimum second, and that's exactly the area seconds, and that's exactly what we, what we want, right? And so um, here, that means basically here we want to return at the end, we want to return high because that's the first true value. So we want to define our mid, which let's just do, is just usually low plus high divided by two. And then we check if the function is true, if the mid is true, that should be a high position. So let's say we find it's true. We don't know if it's this for here or if it's the first position. Okay, so we want to put high here. Because remember, we are looking for the first true, so it doesn't make sense to put high at mid plus one because we already know that mid is true. And we are looking for the first true, so it makes sense to put it at exactly uh, mid position. So otherwise, if it's false, again, we want to maintain the variant that low is always false and high is always true. So if mid is false, it's either here or here. In whatever of these cases, we want to put low here to reduce our at mid to reduce our search space. So otherwise, we want to say low is equal to mid. Okay. Um, and now that we did that, th there's only one case, which is what if um, what if high is actually equal to change indices is still equal to this. What this means basically is we have a case where we have all false. So it's not possible. So in this case, we want to return minus one. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it, the implementation that we need. So let's run this, let's submit, and this passes, okay? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. I hope the explanation here um, was, uh, was easy to understand. If not, let me know if you have any questions. Um, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.